Hello, I think, and welcome to the haunting of Seawall Orphanage. I am having some mega lag, so I'm going to throw this straight on over to Don to go around and do cast introductions while I do a quick refresh. Hi, everybody, and thank you for being here. I'm Don, uh, and I will be the narrator today. So we're playing an original horror game. It's entirely improvised role play inspired by Stephen King mythology. And for 10 sessions now, we've play tested the rules every single week. We've made adjustments based on what we learn uh, through play and through the feedback people have been giving us. So just wanted to say, if you've been following along up to this point, thank you for all of the support. Thank you for all of the suggestions and thoughts about the game uh, and everything you've done on Discord, on YouTube, on social media. If you have any other thoughts or questions about the game after we finish, please feel free to keep it going. Uh, reach out to us on social media post comments on YouTube, let us know what you think. We're gonna keep working on the system, uh, even though this is the finale of this particular story. So if you wanna know more about the setting uh, or about the rules, you can follow along with the rules and the setting on our World Anvil page. If you'd like to know more, everything's there, all about the characters, all about uh, Seawall, uh, the orphanage, all about the town of Pretty Marsh Harbor, so check that out, and thank you very much to World Anvil for being great partners in this show. They've been fantastic with their support, and we really, really have enjoyed getting to use their tools to help tell this story. That's all of the sort of intro spiel, so now it's almost time to return to the end of summer in 2010 to Pretty Marsh Harbor, a small New England town just off the east coast of Maine and just above somewhere else. But before we start, Let's meet our family one more time, my dear friends whom I've had the pleasure to play alongside for the duration of this story. And let's let's find out a little bit about them and their characters. And let's start with Ray. Hi, Ray. Hey, Don, and hey, everybody. Um, I'm with the Brick on the interwebs. Uh, today I play Staley, who is a uh, either 15 or 25 depending on what time zone we're in and yeah this has been a wild ride staley's got a lot going on right now and she's not quite sure how to take it both in 2010 and 2020. uh so i'm i'm just excited to see what happens today i'm so here and ready for it so let's let's get it going let's freaking do this Awesome. I, I also want to say uh, we are doing a little pajama party today and everybody's pajama game is so strong. It's so strong. Um, we'll probably go long today, I imagine, because we want to make sure that we get to a good, good ending for our story. So uh, if you're checking in now, it's a great time to grab drinks, grab a snack. We're going to settle in and tell some scary stories together. Um, continuing on right now, great pajama game, Josh. How are you? Not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not okay. Uh, I'm not prepared. Uh, it's gonna be. It's gonna be a day. It's gonna be a night. It's gonna be an endless expanse. But mostly, it's gonna be the end of summer and all things possibly. So many things. So many things are happening at the, in both 2010 and 2020 simultaneously, but not. Uh, my name is Joshua. I will be playing Jacob Prince tonight. Uh, and boy, oh boy, do we have some stakes, uh, a race potentially. Uh, there are so many things in the mix. The party is split. And, and I just, I just, it, we're coming back to the island and it's just all going to be chaotic and wonderful. And I'm so ready and so not. Do it, do it, Don. Fuck me up, fam. I will. Um, let's go over <laughs> to Lydia. And I also want to say for anybody joining in, we will get to see 2010 and 2020. So if you're new here, our show focuses on these, this family of foster children when they're teenagers in 2010. And sometimes we've moved ahead to when they reunite 10 years later. Uh, and we'll get to do both, both timelines today at different points. But for now, let's go down to Lydia. Also very, very interrupt. strong really yeah. fast before we get to Lydia, who is top of her game today on PJs. 
Uh, massive shout out to our raiders. We had a raid from GoJG at the end of the last stream. We just had a raid from Susanna Grace. Thank you so much, friend, for popping in. And thank you to Kitchen, who seems to have donated. I'm thinking big crits. I'm going to go back and check. My Twitch is currently lagged to hell because our chat is going bananas. And I am super excited because that means you're all here and hanging out. Uh, so over to Lydia with A plus pajama game. Thank you. I'm glad I could bring these pajamas to the table for this night. Um, I'm so excited and also so sad. I don't want this to end uh, a little bit. I'm scared and a little bit because it's bittersweet because I love this game. Um, I'm Lydia. I'm Lydia Heels on Twitter. Uh, I play Ren, also sometimes known as Birdie. She's the youngest. She's 14 or 24, depending on the year. And she, I think the last game was at the movie seeing Scott Pilgrim versus the world with Travis or Meryl. And we'll, we'll definitely get to do part of the movie today too, which is going to be fun. I've never actually, I don't think I've seen Scott Pilgrim, which I, I think makes me a bad person. I've been told it Oof. makes me a bad person. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm very excited. I mean, Ren will <laughs> never good. forgive you, Lydia Mine. I appreciate that. Thank you, Lydia. Yeah. You're you're a good friend. <laughs> yeah. Tommy. Tommy, how are you doing, buddy? Oh boy. I mean, <clears throat> I'm in the perfect emotional state for this. Like just absolute, you know, just I'm operating on a little like very little sleep and and um among other things, so like I'm just I'm in the great I'm in the perfect emotional state. We'll see how tonight goes. I'm Tommy at Imperial. I play Jay Hopkins, uh, our resident perfect boy, um, who's definitely definitely not got anything wrong with him at all. There's nothing wrong with him at all. Uh, his plan to get uh, Jacob in trouble last week definitely backfired. Um, he's part of Island Crew right now, and Island Crew is getting the hell out of Dodge. We're also best crew. We do have, <laughs> we do have Team Island and uh, Team Mall, uh, and yeah, I'd say Team Mall has the at least it appears that they have the better deal of the two right now. Um, but we'll we'll go we'll catch up with the island here in a second. Travis, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, man, I'm good. I love the tone in everybody's voice. I love the croak and the the frog in their throat. I love how checked in. Everybody is, and uh, this is going to be some shit. I'm producer Trav. I'm playing Merrill Gross. He's heir to the Gross grocery store fortune, and uh, he dresses, he wears the same thing every day. And uh, they raided his shoebox last episode, and uh, that's not cool, to say the least. And uh, I'm ready to rock. I'm ready to do this. According to Alan Moore, uh, I haven't asked him personally, but uh, according to his writing, what we're going to be doing over the next three or so hours is actual ceremonial magic. So I'm fucking pumped up. I'm glad everybody's checking it out and watching. And uh, let's get it on. Once more for the sweet souvenir, Don. Thank you, Travis. Last but not least, present Charlie. How are you doing, friend? That's me. Uh, my lag seems to be settling down, which is a relief because I did not need lag on top of the stress I am feeling right now, because as we will soon find out when I get the clip played up in a little bit, uh, I, I stabbed a guy last session with a biro. I'm just going to sit here clicking this. No, I'm not. I'm going to put it down. Um, but I am very excited for the rest of the show tonight and to hang out with some of my favorite people in the world on Friday Night Frights, which is the Encounter Roleplay crew, which is everyone in chat and all of these beautiful PJ people up in here. We are just five retweets away from unlocking that poll. It's a big poll, as it always is. It's going to make a huge difference. And after that, the more retweets, the worse it gets for all of us, which means more fun for all of you and more gifts for the future. Uh, thanks so much to Ray and Josh for donating their horrified faces to this evening's tweets. We appreciate you much, Lee. I'm going to hand over to Past Charlie to tell you all about our sponsors, and then it will be time to get ready to rock and go to Seawall, I think. We'll see. Pretty much Harbor has many secrets? Question mark? Past Charlie here to tell you about a few of our sponsors. 
Fantasy Grounds is our virtual tabletop of choice, providing us access to roles, tokens, maps, and more. You can try it today for free at fantasygrounds.com. While you're there, why not check out Fantasy Grounds Unity? World Anvil is a remarkable resource. Whether you're a writer, GM, or player, organizing your campaign notes or building an entire world. Get forging today for free at worldanvil.com. And before we get into today's game, we'd like to shout out our friends at Andrews McMeal Publishing, who published the wonderful game Zweihander. If you haven't checked that out, you can catch it here on Wednesdays. We'd also like to mention Modiphius, who manage and produce a wide range of RPGs. Whether you feel like being dishonored, exploring a tale from the loop, or boldly going with Star Trek adventures, why not check out Modiphius.com? Everything gets a lot darker. The second she would become aware of a presence, if there is one, Dawn, she'd grab the ballpoint pen that's in her hand and just try and stab whoever this is. Because she remembers the hospital with Mr. McGinty ripping out her hair. She remembers the beach with the fire axe man. And she is just convinced she's going to be like, she spooks the fuck out of herself. And this door's just open. If someone appears, she's just going to stab them with the ballpoint pen because she's scared and not really thinking. And she's not crazy. Go ahead and roll me Desperate Grit. You do see shapes there outlined oh, as no. so they look like humans. How many dice do I have on my screen, Don? One? You have one bonus dice. Alright, that means I get to roll two dice. <laughs> two threes! That would be a fail, Don. There's a uh, shape behind you, and you hear like a footstep behind you, and you spin around and drive the pen into a person's eye. You can feel the force. You can hear it pop, that sickening sound. And then you see behind that person, Jay. Jay, you watch Gigi spin around, having driven here to the museum, taken here by Lyle, following Gigi inside. And Lyle opens up his mouth and screams, begins to writhe, and then he drops to the ground. And the storm outside gets a little louder. And the siren continues to scream. But that's where we're going to end our story for tonight. So let's begin. Pretty Marsh Harbor is just like any other small town in America. It was stolen. It was paid for in blood. And that blood has sunk so deep into the town's bones that it will never wash out. Its people go about their lives trying to forget about the past, trying to grab onto happiness in the small ways that they can find it. But all of the flowers that grow there, all of the leaves on the trees, every child that is born, and every summer love that blooms is stained, red, stinking with copper and rot. Its people try to forget about the past, but the past will never forget about them, and it will never forgive them. Just like any other small town in America. Jay, you stand washed in an eerie crimson light that fills the Pretty Marsh Historic Museum. Before you, the double doors to the Wax Museum that tell the story of Pretty Marsh's founding family lie open like the maw of an ancient sea leviathan. The walls of the ceiling of the museum shake as a terrible storm rages outside, where Main Street is already starting to flood. 
Lyle, the old foreman who rescued you from being sacrificed, from becoming, as Jacob's dad put it, human veal to be served up to the island. Lyle lies dead at your feet, Gigi's ballpoint pin in his eye, murdered by your foster sister. The sound of the lighthouse's siren sings across the island. It's impossible, but it does, because though the lighthouse is gone, collapsed, though you saw it fall, though you were inside of it when it fell, the siren still sounds now. It's overpowered for a moment by a vicious crack of thunder. And that's where we begin our story for tonight in the same way that we always do. Pretty Marsh Harbor has many secrets, some of them big, some of them small, a few of them terrifying. Tommy, what is one thing that is true about this scene? Oh, okay. I mean, this is the finale, so we're gonna we're gonna go hard to go home. <clears throat> I think that uh, I think that the blood that is most likely pooling from Lyle's body at this point is beginning is soaking into the wax figures around us, turning them red. And in like normally like it just soak like their feet, right? But this seems like it's almost like the wax figures are absorbing it. The fluorescent lights of the museum itself had turned red when the siren began to sound. And now that pool of blood, more blood than any human body should contain, is spreading like a little river into the depths of the wax museum through that open mall, that double doorway. And you can see it traveling upwards, the foot, the ankles, the knees spreading, taking the wax figures. And in that moment with you and Gigi face to face, there's another crack of lightning and the storm gets a little bit louder outside. GG. What? I. Hi. Uh, what was. What, what, what are you doing here? Who? Jay's gonna like look down at the body and look at Gigi for a moment. Who is that? Gigi. <clears throat> that was the old foreman from the. It doesn't. It doesn't. Doesn't matter, Gigi. We have is to he, get out of here. Is he? Is, is he? Is, did, did I Gigi, kill him? It, Gigi, it doesn't matter. Gigi, it doesn't matter. What do you mean? We have to get out Gigi, of here. Should we? Should we? We call someone? No. No what, one else here is no? our friend. What do you mean? I, I don't know exactly what going on but something fucked up is going on here you know that you know that there's something weird about this island we have to get out of here they 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 covered up they covered up all the murders jay all of them this is just one more they'll cover up okay we've we've got we've got to we've got to get out of here gotta go where, where are we where are we gonna go and she's just making sure she's got her stuff and looking for an exit that isn't the front door i know we have a door open in front of us don can we see anything more beyond it into that back room maybe absolutely so you have you're in sort of the center of the museum right now and there's all kinds of little exhibits a lot of them dedicated to fish and aquatic life fossils the back room uh, through the door that stands open before you is the wax museum and you can see through its entrance 
the fluorescent lights now turned crimson provide just a wash of red. Looking through it, you can see those wax figures, historic figures, the people who created this town and made it what it is today, are a wash in blood that seems to be traveling upwards on their bodies. Just any, anywhere but here, Gigi. Just okay. anywhere but here. Okay. Um, take Why? His car. Why is the lighthouse sign siren? How? The car? I don't. And she's like fuzzing in and out of what the actual problem is and what the millions of other problems are that are forming in her head in this moment. And Jay is just like. He like breathes in a few times to try and calm himself down. And then he's gonna reach down and he's gonna try and search Lyle for his car keys. Jay, roll me smarts. Oh, okay. I mean, that's good. <laughs> that is a that is five dice for me. So and this is a regular roll, so you only need oh, there's, that's there's six and two fives. So as you're searching Lyle, you get to introduce one truth about the scene. All right. I did a bad one for us to start with. I'm going to do a good one for us. The, other one, the keys are in one of his pockets. Jay definitely, definitely has to get blood on his hands, probably. Um, like, I imagine, like, he probably fell forward um, when he when he died. And so, like, Jay has to, like, turn him over and try to go through his pockets, which are definitely, like, so his clothes are, like, soaked in blood. Um there's a moment, Jay, where it's hard to get him turned over because he fell forward, that his body is catching the pin that is sticking out of him, is catching on the ground, making it hard for you to roll him. But the pin snaps, you can hear the crack, and with the crack, you can hear the peeling of his clothes and his skin against the sticky blood, the pool of blood beneath him as you roll him over with ripping sound. Jay's gonna like bite back a little bile. Like Jay at this point has not like Jay has mostly stuck to his 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 bug collection in terms of like handling dead things. <laughs> um so this this is a big step this way, and Jay's just like reaching in, finding the keys. Ignoring the fact that blood is probably still warm. Just, you just, you just gotta, you just gotta get, you just gotta drive the car. We're gonna get the ferry out of here. We're gonna, we're just gonna, we're gonna get as far away as we can from here. We... We're gonna get off the damn island. We should, we should, we should go home first. Why? No, no. If if we if we we we're, we're gonna go, we should we should go home first. There's something there's something we should get from the house. It... Okay, but it had better be important. Remember, Let's go. don't trust anyone here. Okay. There's another large crack of lightning. You can feel it shaking the walls of the museum. And as the two of you are there making your plans, a little bit of water begins to run in off of the street outside. And you can see the front of the museum, the way that you came from, not the back room. And you can see that there's a little bit of flooding that's starting to happen on the street outside. Uh, an aluminum shop sign is floating by and it catches, it gets stuck in the doorway of the museum. You can make out with a light 
a crack of lightning that kind of illuminates and reflects off of its surface that the sign reads crab and go i think in one hand uh gigi still has that pen grasp she hasn't like fully let it go i think even as he told before she would have pulled it out and back so it's still in her hand and at the lightning, she turns as if she's going to attack something else, although there's nothing there. And then she sees that sign in the doorway, and she looks to Jay. And with her free hand, she'll try and grab Jay's hand and just head for that front door. The car must be out the front. We've got to go. Bad things are happening. And she'll try and jump over that sign just as fast as she can out of this building. Roll me a desperate quickness. And we're in 2010. My quickness is five. One, two, three, four, five. You just need a five or higher. I have a few that are five or higher. I have two fives and a six. Excellent. So you introduce one truth as you are running for the exit, the way out to the street. As we run uh, towards the exit, there's a, a pulsing sound, a neon sound of electricity. Outside, we can see the power lines for the street are just vibrating with like a neon glow. And it's going down to the traffic light and the traffic light is pulsing through the options rapidly. And all of the lights in uh, Pretty Marsh are just going on and off, on and off. And Jay and Gigi, as you witness this, as you're getting close to the door, I, there's just a little bit of standing water here, not quite even an inch, but it's moving further into the wax museum. You see those pulsing power lines outside. You hear a loud honk, a car horn, and then screeching of tires, and you see a car spin out, passing by the plane, the doorway in front of you. You see it for a second, and then it's beyond, and you hear a loud crash, and you watch as one of those power lines outside topples over, and those charged lines crash into the flooding street. You can see electricity arcing out through the street. We, we just gotta go, Jay. The car. Uh, 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 right? Is there, is there, is there like a conceivable path we can take that doesn't result in us getting electrocuted in the water? Roll me desperate smarts. And for chat, the poll is still up. Oh, that is two fives and a six. That seems to be. <laughs> so you, you get to introduce the truth here. Rolls are good so far today. Okay. Um, I think that. Eh, I mean, I am. Um, don't quote me on any science uh, of electricity here or anything, <laughs> chat, just <laughs> no, don't quote me. But I like to think that this town is so old that some of the signs are still just painted wood. Um, and I think that, or maybe like, maybe like some paneling of this old museum is just old wood and some of that has fallen over and it's a uh, perilous but a workable path that we could perhaps walk on top of or float on top of whatever's uh, most appropriate here um, i just had a ridiculous idea tommy if you don't mind a suggestion uh -huh. no go ahead what if Absolutely. we grab the wax works and we use them as like rubber isolated like things to jump from because they shouldn't be super conductive if they're waxed Oh boy, I mean, yes, this requires grabbing the wax things, but yep, if Gigi suggests this in this moment, Jay's just like, okay, yep. 
We just need to get to the car and go, right? Yep, just we just gotta get to the car. Just we just gotta get to the car, Gigi. Okay. okay. Runs back into the museum. Back towards the nearest waxwork display. Doesn't even look at who she is grabbing from our great illustrious history here on Pretty Much Harbor. And is just gonna pull them out and off of whatever spike or however they're kind of held upright and pull it towards the door. I imagine it's heavier than Gigi expects, but she's just chanting to herself that we just gotta get to the car and go. Does Jay also run back to grab his own wax figure? Uh, yeah, Jay will help. Jay will help. Gigi, um, you you don't look, but you grab the sort of centerpiece figure in the wax museum, the one that depicts one of the founding fathers of Pretty Marsh Harbor, Robert Toothaker. Robert uh, Toothaker is dressed in a preacher's frock with a gaunt face. He has these damning eyes, these accusatory eyes, and in his hand is a woodman's axe. Of course, halfway up to his torso is covered in the blood that's been draining up him. And if even if Gigi doesn't look, I think there's a moment as she sets him down where you would catch at least enough of a look, Gigi, that you would see that his waxen features, his nose, his eyes, his smiling mouth are melting, washing off his face, kind of just in clumps falling into the rising water that's now several inches high inside the museum. Jay, you grab a figure as well. It's a depiction of a Wabanaki indigenous person from the display that sort of talks about the founding family's contentious, uh, murderous taking of the island from the Wabanaki people. And this is a figure who has a hand up over his face as though he's trying to protect himself. Uh, and as you set it down into the water, Jay, to drag it along, that hand is almost like it's reaching up to you for help. I'm sorry about this. Jay says to the wax figure, sort of under his, his breath. I'm just going to drag him over. Try to make it to the truck. And Gigi? I think she'll help Jay get his kind of into the position that we need first, and then she'll try and move hers. And are you, how are you, when you're on top of these things, or like, how are you imagine that you're getting to the truck? What's the idea here? I want to paint so, the picture. This looks I was like. kind of thinking... One out several feet high. Um, almost up to like all, it's starting to spill into the nearby homes that are kind of risen up off the ground, but there's a there's a good flood on the street outside. It's kind of thinking we so we take a bit of Tommy's wood idea, uh, but the the wax dummies or silicon whatever they are, the the dummies that's what I'm going to call them uh, are kind of laid out like planks. So we run along one and then we pull the next one around. So it's kind of laying step stones, I guess. And by pulling, I mean pushing with that wooden plank that Tommy, or rather Jay, handily pulled from the museum wall. I imagine one of those, please don't touch the display signs, something along those lines. Absolutely. And you create yourself a moving platform, and you're like jumping from platform to platform. And it's not far out to the street to get to the truck, which does have large wheels. It's a big pickup truck, uh, which are, the wheels are rubber. And Jay has the keys. And Jay, with your efforts, you're able to get to the truck and get it unlocked since you go first. Uh, are you taking, are you going inside? Are you getting inside the truck immediately? What's your plan? Um, yeah, I mean, Jay, yeah, Jay's getting in the truck and Jay's gonna like hold out a hand to get Gigi in the truck as well. Which she totally takes and 
herself into this vehicle. As Jay jumps on the wooden sign, the final piece of your moving platform to stay above the water, and every time you hit, your weight does push down a little bit. Water splashes up. It's not a perfect platform. And the last jump, Jay, it does slide the platform behind you off to the side. GG, it's going to be a tough jump to get there. You're sort of in, in on an island right now, and because the water is rising and beginning to flow more quickly, you're starting to drift further away from the truck. You can see those power lines just dancing across the street, coming up like tentacles and then slapping down with electricity into the water. I think fueled by confusion as to what is real in this world and denial about what is real in this world, she takes a deep breath and she almost kind of visualizes being on top of the top of the diving board. When the, the, the school pool was fully filled and ready to go, they had a diving board and she visualized how terrifying that was when she jumped off of that and she can make that jump and she's looking towards the car and Jay and she's just going to will herself to make this jump with every ounce of athleticism in her body. And even though you're telling me it's going to be real tough, Don, Chaos Chorus have fueled me with two additional dice, which I will throw into a roll to throw myself into this car to get away from this terrible place and the murdered body of the one person who was on our side on this island. Oops. Roll me a desperate grit roll. Grit. All right. Um, I've got two of those plus my two extra dice from on screen. Thanks, Sam. Four dice. Nope. I don't want to discuss how many nat ones is sat in front of me right now. That would be a no. <laughs> you do I get down that to one grit. Yeah, so you, you lose one grit from your dice pulls for the rest of the session. And the truth I'll introduce is that you do make that but you do get your hand onto Jay's hand. Jay, her leg goes into the water right as one of those power lines comes down and Gigi, your entire body locks up. You can see electricity dancing off of her teeth, Jay, and your arm is starting to shake too. Some of that electricity is passing off to you. You have to make the choice. Do you let her go or do you hold on? Boy. Oh, that's a tough choice for 2010, Jay. Oh, God. Um, okay, and I know the exact reasoning why he does this. Jay is going to try. He's going to hold on and try and pull her in. Jay, you can make me a desperate grit roll. Okay, that's also two dice. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use those two. I'm just gonna use those two uh, extra dice I have there. We're just gonna burn these right off the bat. I don't need them later anyway. Who needs? <laughs> that's a six. It's one six. One one five or one six. Uh, so you get to name a truth here, Jay. Um, Jay, man, like Jay, just like. Maybe like like Jay's definitely going numb from the voltage, but maybe like Jay's got his foot down somewhere that makes a a um what's it, a pathway right for the for the electricity to like a grounding right he's got like a grounding and so like he's able to power through like it's still a lot of voltage going through like electricity going through them but I think this the reason he's able to do this is because he's he's probably got you know this is um. You know, this is Maine. I've probably got some pretty thick rubber-soled shoes. Um, and I'm sure there's, like, maybe, like, those, like, all-weather rubber mats in the ground here uh, on the in the in the truck. Um, and so Jay has, like, managed to grunt himself in that there's a pathway for the electricity to exit him. Um, and he just pulls Gigi out of it and just, I imagine Gigi just sprawls across the <laughs> is it one of those trucks with like two seats or is it one of those ones with a bench in the middle <laughs> no, I, I think it's one of the ones with a bench in the middle mm -hmm. okay. 
but you can like awkwardly drape her body over it. Gigi's hair is sticking up in all directions, her recently cut hair. And I think Gigi is, if she's not unconscious, she's just completely stunned at the moment. Um, as you pull yourself into the car, Jay, get the keys in the ignition and start the engine and it does start. It takes three tries, but you finally get it going. You can see more bodies now flooding out from the wax museum into the street. There's water flooding into the museum, but there's blood flowing out. And you can see their faces slop off, their features, their noses, their eyes, their mouths all slop off of their faces. They spill out into the street and you get the truck going. Gigi, you get to pass the spotlight off to someone else in our other group. First, I'd like to say thanks to chat for your votes. The uh, poll has been decided and the outcome is a final birthday gift done. So enjoy that one. Um, and I'm going to hand the spotlight over to Birdie, last seen having a wonderful time at the cinema with um, Meryl, the most unlikely of dates. Perfect. One second here. So, Ren, Birdie. The last time we saw you, you were off island on Bangor, the town that's on the edge of the main coastline where the fate comes and goes. Uh, you'd gone to the rundown mall and split up with some of your friends to go see a movie, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, with your friend Meryl. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna know a few things as we get started and then we'll begin the scene. What's Ren thinking about as she's watching the movie? Is she able to focus on the movie? Is she able to enjoy herself and relax? Or is she preoccupied while she watches it? Uh, Ren is thinking two things. Number one, she loves this movie and she's like just immersed in this experience of being in a movie theater because I don't think she ever has been in one. And if she has, she can't remember. Uh, number two, Dippin' Dots are amazing. <laughs> it's her first time with Dippin' Dots, right? Yeah, first time for Dippin' Dots. This is honestly the best day. I mean, the movie's fine and she's like, she likes it, but like just the whole experience, I think is just like encompassing her. So does Ren have a favorite part of the movie? Is there one part that like just stands out to her? She can't get over it, it makes her laugh or it makes her feel safe? I mean, she just loves like the love story, like the main story between the two, because it's like such a teenage, like sweet story. And she's just like the just story. now like coming to the age of that, of like where you have like boyfriends and girlfriends and stuff. Does the story make her think about anybody in her life? Does the love story make her ha get any ideas? She doesn't really know any boys except for the ones that she lives with. So no, like all of her, all of her crushes are just like people from Teen Magazine that she reads with Gigi. Perfect. So let's begin the scene then. Um, the movie ends and the credits begin to roll. You and Meryl are in the movie theater. It's dark. There's nobody else in there with you. Uh, the mall was relatively quiet and the movie theater was entirely empty besides the one old woman who is working behind the counter. And you've enjoyed this entire movie with just the two of you. As the credits begin to roll, Ren, what is one thing that is true about the scene? Ren thought that Meryl would be bored out of his mind and looked over expecting him to be just like asleep or just miserable but he has like a goofy smile on his face mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i love that so uh meryl then <laughs> 
what is uh, what's the what's the takeaway from the movie for Meryl, or what's the most memorable part of the movie for Meryl, and and why? Well, I think that it's presumptuous and rude to just launch into what you like and don't like about a movie, and that's exactly what Meryl does as the credits are rolling. You like, like this is the good popcorn. I'm gonna. I'm going to take this home. All right, here we go. Let me uh, let me just go ahead and rewrite this movie right now, okay? Ramona Flowers has managed to sexually dominate seven uh, extremely aggressive men who are obsessed with her, right? So, and she's managed to break up with them and they are still obsessed with her, right? Then this kid comes along. He, he's he's fallen in love with her. She knows it. Okay, the problem is she has mobilized these seven men as an elite strike group, and they are globetrotting, toppling governments, uh, all because, uh, you know, they're all vying for the love of this blue-haired girl with kind of a cool haircut. And then this kid comes along, and she likes him, but the problem is it's the scorpion and the frog. She's the scorpion. He, she, she can't help herself. She's going to eat this kid. Right. And he just walks right into it and uh, and it falls head first into her web of uh, of of, you know, not lies, but just like direct domination. You know, there's just some sort of magnetic appeal to this to this woman that, uh, you know, these relatively ex uh, ex successful, dangerous and powerful, obnoxious dickheads are like completely, uh, you know, psycho about it. So. But other than that, uh, that's how I would rewrite it. But that was fun. Did you like it? Uh, yeah, Meryl, I loved it. Um, I loved it. Thanks for bringing me, for asking. Yeah, yeah. My pleasure, you know, and we're in the good seats, right? Right in yeah, the pocket. Yeah, you really... You really knew exactly what seats to sit in. How many movies have you seen in a movie theater? Uh, well, I do a lot of sneaking out. So I caught the 10 o'clock of, you know, a lot of, I don't know, just whatever they were doing just to get out of the house. So, you know, I watch a lot of Michael Bay movies. Uh, I like to watch shit blow up. Uh, uh that Godzilla they put out a few years ago was pretty good. And they I, laid the egg in Madison Square Garden. I don't like to break the rules that often, but I think that uh, when I get like as old as you and I'm a senior and I can have a little bit more freedom, I think I think I would like to sneak out a little bit and see some more movies. This was really fun. And maybe they won't check my ID this time. Maybe they won't need my student ID. Ren, by the time you and I turn 18, we will have spent so much time being told what to do and have our time dominated by fools who thought they were instructing us that we will have finally broken the chains and can finally do whatever the fuck we want. And I don't know about you, but I'm getting in a fast car and I'm driving all the way west and I'm going to walk into the ocean up to my neck and I'm not going to leave until... I'm satisfied, and that may be a while. Uh, so, yeah, you sneak out. You watch some movies. I want you to watch all the damn movies. I'll tell you what. Let's go get some gift certificates and go to the, you know, let me buy you a few movies because this is this is a crime, a crime that this was your first movie. I'm glad you had fun. I mean, you know, take away from the experience for you, but I th you need to do this again and again and again. You know what I mean? You just need to drink deep from the cup of cinema whatever it well, is i say go overboard i haven't really watched that many movies except for the ones that we have at the house and you know they had the blockbuster on the island for a little bit but it closed down it flooded so i haven't really gotten to rent anything there's only so many times you can watch steel magnolias on vhs uh if I watch Julia Roberts be force fed orange juice one more time, I think I'm just going to throw up. I just find that very traumatic, and I don't, I don't understand why he plays it over and over again. It's not. I think Gigi and I probably know all the words. <laughs> yeah, probably so. I think I have it memorized. There's a creaking at the back of the movie theater, and the door swings open, 
you can see the light from outside in the lobby spilling in. For a moment, the old woman uh, stands there looking inside, peering at you just to make sure that you're not up to no good. She nods her head once and she slurps loudly from her gigantic oversized Coca-Cola cup. And she turns and begins to waddle back slowly into the lobby. And around that time, there's also, you can hear a crack of thunder from somewhere in the distance, but loud enough that you can hear it even through the walls of the movie theater. So we're walking through the lobby. We're leaving the theater. Is that what I understood? You can, yeah. Uh, in, in the lobby, it's empty still. The old woman has gone uh, back behind the counter and she's sort of like leaning. She looks a little sloppy and I think Meryl might, you, you might recognize just sort of a glazed, maybe drunken look in her eyes as she slurps from that Coca-Cola cup and just kind of watches you. Smiles at Ren, smiles at Bertie, but gives you a good kind of look. I'm telling you, honey, you're electric dynamite. Vegas, baby. We got to get you an act. Simple as that. We're going to make you, we're going to do Vegas residency. And I'm thinking Broadway. The sky's the limit. Film, television, call me. Call me. Give me a call. Being she takes another big slurp from her cup and leans over, uh, looks back to you, Birdie, and she says, Did you enjoy the movie, honey? I loved it. This was the most fun I've ever had. Good now. Uh, you remember what I said. Gives him a dirty look again. Oh, he loved the movie too. I thought he would fall asleep, but he was smiling through the whole thing. Oh, all right now, you just be safe out there, all right? Okay, you too. Thank you for ripping my ticket. You're welcome, honey. Go on with you now. Meryl walks out, shaking his head, mumbling something about the local color under his under his breath. Meryl, as the two of you step out uh, and leave behind the movie theater, back into the mall proper, you see again. This is a mall that looks like it never got upgraded from the 1980s. Um, it's old pastel walls are just kind of cracked and worn down with time. There were some people milling about before uh, when you first entered, some teenagers and a few shoppers, but it, it's it's almost entirely empty now, just a few stragglers. Uh, and, and you see um, that through the windows of the, the front doors, one of the entryways, one of the four entryways to the mall, you can see the dark clouds have completely washed out the sunlight from outside and it's starting to get darker and darker and you can see cars and in, in the parking lot pulling out in a long line like it seems like a lot of people are leaving all at once okay Merrill grabs a bunch of napkins off the table shoves it in his pocket for no reason um and uh, looks around for Ren. And is everybody like freaking out running because they're trying to get out to beat the storm? Or is there... It, is there it looks like people them? might be trying to beat the storm, but they're not running, right? They're not freaking out. It's just that um, they're all... It seems like everybody's okay. leaving pretty much at the same time. Right. I'm, I'm going to take my, my flip phone and uh, call the car. And then I'm looking for Josh. Uh, I'm looking for Jacob and Staley, right? All right. Around here somewhere. Great. So I start glancing around for them. Let's then move over to Jacob and Staley. To clarify, uh, Josh would absolutely hang out with Meryl uh, at the mall. It would be amazing. He's just such a cool dude. Um, yeah, I guess... Jacob so, and, and uh, Staley were having TGIs. Right, yeah, you had just paid your check at TGI Fridays after discussing with each other your plans to run away from Pretty Marsh together, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Yeah. Something like that. So let's let's start then. Uh, you've just paid your check. You've overpaid your check. Uh, in fact, if I recall correctly, and through the window of the TGI Fridays, you can see a huge storm over the coast in the direction of pretty much Harbor. You can see the crackle of lightning. It is dark. It's much darker than most storms. And as we start this scene, Jacob, what is one thing that is true? Um, one thing that is true is, uh, as we are, as we are coming out, um, it is raining heavily and water is starting to like, starting to like bubble in and like people are like traping it in, coming in to like get out of the rain, but it's also like being washed into the mall. Um, and it's just starting to run across the ground so like there's already like an inch and like the food court i imagine is up high so we are looking down over the railing and we can already see like ripples of water coming in um and yeah it looks like it's going to be a little bit chaotic getting out of here yeah and you can see the truth that i'll add is that you can see um a few like maybe brother sister but young a pair of young kids just splashing in a little bit of flood that's come through the mall as everyone else is exiting and i'll i'll say that you can see he hasn't spotted you yet but you can see meryl down there near the movie theater you can see ren is with him but the two of you are up in the food court so you're up on like the second level i I looked to Ray and I said, we, we should, we should get, uh, I looked to Staley, sorry, and say, we should, you got me doing it now, Trav. Uh, I, I looked to Staley and I said, we should, uh, we should get out of here. Like, we should. Yeah, yeah, it, we gotta find everybody. Are we even gonna be able to get back? You think? I don't know. I mean. I it wouldn't be the worst thing if we couldn't. He reaches out and grabs her hand and just genuinely beams like a real honest smile for, for once and, and is just really overjoyed to hear that. But says, uh, I mean, we got to try, right? <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Okay. And uh, he will, like, take off weaving through people, sort of probably, like, spectating all of this and, and like, cut a uh, uh, cut a path through uh, sort of, like, the crowds and uh, trailing Staley behind him uh, through uh, everyone to try and catch up with Meryl so they don't get separated. Oh, damn. Uh, thank you to Mr. Cock who just donated 10 community subs and that is all that is in our chat right now. Done, that means you need to unleash a twist at some point, uh, whatever that is. I am scared. Thanks, friends. I gotcha. I got some ideas. Two twists. Uh, two twists. Cool. cool. So we'll say, Jacob, you're heading down the escalator, which has been turned off for safety. So you actually have to mm. use it like stairs to get down to the to the floor below. And Staley, he's holding your hand. I want to know what's Staley thinking and feeling right now? Staley's going through a million and one things in her mind. She's trying to enjoy this time away with a boy she's liked for a very long time. But then, like, every time he holds her hand, she she's getting, like, visions of what happens in 2020. And, like, it's almost like a struggle for her to, like, not break down. So, like, anytime he's not looking at her, she's fighting off tears and, like, has this, like, really sunken expression. But anytime he looks at her, she kind of just, like, sucks it all up for a minute and looks super happy because she's happy in that moment with him. Um, and I think she's panicking at this moment, like internally starting to panic and being like, 
oh my gosh, is this it? Like, like is what I'm seeing actually something that's going to happen? Or is it just like, are we going to die now? Like what's going on? I think she's having like a bunch of conflicted thoughts and feelings, but she's trying to keep herself together as much as possible for like the sake of not looking crazy in front of the boy she likes. <laughs> I There is no way that Jacob notices like the, uh, the sadness at all. Like he's just too wrapped up in, in those smiles. And also like, having a plan for the first time in weeks uh having a certainty and having an idea of how to go forward and he's just tunnel vision like and he has in his mind it's simple we get to merrill we get to the car we go back we go in and 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 do what we need to do and then we are on the first ferry back out and that is it that's it's gonna be fine but um god damn staley uh there's a moment as you're getting down to the bottom of the elevator or escalator and and people are pushing out into the streets to get to their cars uh that your thoughts your memories linger on that last moment that you saw jacob the in the future the 10 year older you and the 10 year older him through the fire of the log cabin, that light that was shooting out of that trap door, that hatch, him jumping down and you running off that moment, it strikes you in your mind. And then you're back with him and he's pulling you through the crowd. If Staley could say, and she can't, but if she could say, something to him what would she say like, what does she wishes she could say to him oh my gosh uh she wishes she could tell him to not leave her side to trust that they'll make it through it and to not do anything stupid even if you think it's a good idea Didn't you just agree to run away with me at 16? Hey, that's way different than jumping down a hole <laughs> into the depths of the abyss, okay? I think that's a little different. The two of you uh, will say you, you see you get down to the bottom level of the mall and you catch Meryl and Ren's eyes across the little court there. You can also see beyond through the doors that storm that's lingering over the coast beyond, it's so strange. It's dark, but it's starting to turn almost like a reddish hue. It's not like any kind of cloud coverage or storm coverage that you've ever seen. And you've lived here your entire lives. You've seen some bad storms come through. There's something different about this. But the four of you are able to reunite at the mall just as I think Merrill's probably called for his car. Yeah, I'm like flipping my phone closed and like looking over at the two of them coming up. Just like, tut tut, looks like rain. Jacob aquaplanes and like surfs slightly across like the the surface water that's coming in over to you. And he's just oh. like, yo, uh, yeah, so we should probably, you know, get out of here. Uh, like pretty quick. Yeah, they're, gonna, they're gonna pick us up right over here, so we'll we'll go hang out under the uh, thingy. Did you have fun? What'd you do? Got food. Did you play food. Did you play the black light golf. The black light putt putt. There is the most childish and guilty look on Jacob's face as he turns to look to Staley for a moment and like can't help himself but just be like, what did you do? And he's like, uh, food. Yeah, ate. It was great. Food. Shit. Lights are on the fritz. Food. We really should get out of here. Yeah. We can... We'll talk later, Meryl. Let's yeah, it's try cool. and yeah. survive this, please. How was Mr. Pilgrim? I gotta know. I loved it. It was so good. Jacob, you guys have to see it. 
And you guys should get Dippin' Dots, too. Have you had those before? Uh, no, no. But, uh, no, but I think we're going to make time for it. You know how at the grocery store sometimes you can fill out the little card and you can ask them to start stocking a certain thing for you? Yeah. I think, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do that with Dippin' Dots. What the rainbow card. Yeah. We all can go in and put in for rainbow dip and dots because then they'll definitely have to, they'll have to. It'll yeah. If a lot of people do it, then of course they'll have to because they would make a ton of money off of us if we were just buying dip and dots all the time. I mean, Meryl, like, can't you just company mandate that as like a new, yes. like the gross store? They just have to stock dip and dots. We can, that's a thing you can do, right? That's how that works. Well, it is a thing that I, in a short period of time, we'll own a regional grocery store chain and I'll call the distributor and we'll have more dip and dots than one could shake one's proverbial stick at. Uh, they're good. They're pretty good. The dots. The lights of the mall continue to flicker and then go out and just a few emergency lights turn on and a second later you hear the rattling of chains from behind you Meryl and the old woman uh, who works at the movie theater has come out of the movie theater she shut the doors and you can see that she's chaining up the doors and locking them with a heavy padlock she kind of looks over her shoulder to you the four of you and she says you should all get home hurry now Hey, closing time. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. She like hits uh, Meryl and looks down to Bertie and kind of smiles. You can see like her, that wart on her nose is catching the light from outside. It's like almost extra illuminated in the way that it's catching. And she says to you, Bertie, you got a ride home, dear? Well, yeah, of course. All uh, the, My brothers and sisters, we're all going to ride home together. We have to get the ferry, so we're, we're going to try to beat the storm. It looks like a storm. They're calling it a nor'easter, dear. It's a bad one, so you should hurry now. She kind of looks yeah. to the four of you. Didn't know you were all brothers and sisters. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. You don't look it. A lot of people say that. Well, uh, go on now. Be safe, please. Okay, you too. Thank you. She takes her cup and continues to slurp. She crosses her arms over her chest and... Now she's looking between Jacob and Meryl, giving them sort of the stink eye and just waiting and watching. Is, Do you need a ride? Yeah, is there something that you need? Is is, is everything okay? Meryl rolls need to lock office. up now. It's not safe to be here with the lights off. Right, but we're yeah. just, we just gotta wait for a ride. You can't really wait outside, right? You're not gonna make us wait outside. Roll me, roll me a cool roll. Right. We can stand oh, under the thing. They got the thingy. The, the thing. You know, All right. So we are minus back. one, minus one dice because the hour has changed. Everything's got. Uh, I that means yeah. okay. So normally I have two, which means I have one. So I'm gonna add two of my dice from the extra dice pool. Okay. So I'll be rolling three d six. Three, perfect. And I'm gonna roll on actual dice because I got. Out of the okay, go for it. <laughs> I got two ones and a two. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I, she like her her kind of like dislike of the two guys in the group turns to you now, Staley, and she takes a walkie-talkie off of her hip, and you can hear it crackle as she leans into it. She says. Hey, Jeremy, we got a few kids here who won't leave. Would you mind coming over here and escorting them out nicely? 
crackle. It's there. okay, Jeremy. Jeremy, there's no need. I wouldn't want to talk to her either. And I, I turn and I put my arm around Staley and I'm just like, let's let's get the fuck out of here. Screw this screw this woman. Yeah. It's been great visiting with you. Have a safe trip home. Bye bye. Like I don't take Ren by the arm, but I like sort of body language around her and kind of move toward the door. I think she only gives a small like hand wave to Ren in passing, but continues to wait and watches as you lead Ren out to the door. Is anybody lingering? Is everybody leaving? Step outside into the rain? Leaving. I suppose so. Waiting yeah, for the I car. Will, I will let Meryl heard me, but when we get like outside outside of the door and we're all still waiting i would try to like turn around and see if i could catch her and just give like a small wave she's there just in like in the darkness through the because you're like two you're two doors out right and so you can just kind of make her out and she puts a hand to the door and that hand fades back into the shadow of the mall behind you and you're pressing outside there is a little awning there that kind of protects you from some of the rain but some of it's coming in sideways too and it, people are honking their horns they're doing that thing that human beings do when they completely lose their ability to reason when there's any kind of natural threat outside they can't drive they can't like stay ordered people are like cutting in front of other people and causing huge jams in the parking lot and the four of you are just outside of the mall getting pelted kind of in the side of the face with uh, a little bit of it's it's a little bit of hail like small pieces of hail and sideways rain i look to the others as like the rain just lashes down on us and i'm just like i bet gg and jay don't have to deal with this right now just <sighs> what do you think they're doing I don't know, I mean, GG sits back in the library. Oh. Well, it sounds very much like Gigi. I I take out my phone and uh, I text Gigi and just say like, Hey, what are you up to? And I imagine a few moments later, stay oh, in yeah, his pocket. My back pocket <laughs> will vibrate. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just like hold it up and just like poke him and oh. shake it in his face. Yeah, I forgot that. <sighs> it's just a little water. Let's see what the big deal is. It's a beautiful thing. Source of all life. Yeah, what is your deal with water at the moment? It's like become a thing. Thing? Just yeah, dissolve. like when like when people like try and give themselves nicknames. And they're like, I'm like, you know, just call me Ace or something like that, you know. And it's just, it's just super. You just keep bringing up water, again and again. You know what your name means, Jacob? Uh, brother of. You ever me? looked it up? Yeah. No. It's from the Bible. Jacob, brother of Esau, fucked over his brother to get his dad's money. Good story. Should look it up. Know thyself, Jacob. Let the water run over you so that you may know thyself. Right at that moment, Meryl, your driver, pulls up on the side of the street and hits a puddle, and water splashes, it sprays uh, all four of you. And there's a haunt. Meryl laughs like a Meryl laughs like a little kid, you know. Oh, hey, there it is. I'm awake. All right, here, all's ashore that's going ashore. Ladies first. And then this guy. Just kidding, brother. Watch your feet, watch your step. I think as Staley gets in, she's like complaining like, oh, I wore my good vans today. Like, what the hell? Come on. Like she doesn't care at all. She hardly notices. Like she's kind of still like 
super jazzed. She's on cloud nine. She didn't care. Right. Refreshing. It's how you know you're alive. Say, brother, can we get those seat warmers going back here? And I want to be in. I want to be in Tijuana by six, or you're fired. Just kidding. The window partition in the front of the car rises upward, but the seat warmers do click on. <laughs> the four of you get in the car. Good. What's Good. Uh, so What's the What's the plan here? What are we doing? Where are we're, we driving? We're gonna we're go home. back to the to the ferry, right? There's no there's no plan here, Don. Nothing's wrong. Everything's fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's just an average yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> we're simply taking this car to the ferry where we'll get on the ferry and then we will With no problems. No problems at what all. Sail so back to the island. It'll be fine. That's the plan. Yeah. What time is it? It's like it's late afternoon. Awesome. It's 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 almost time to catch the ferry anyways. But once you arrive to the ferry, and it does take a few extra minutes and you pull up, you can see through the windows um, as the rain here, at least on the mainland, has started to let up just a little bit, that the storm off the coast is much worse than it is here. And you can see through the windows that the ferry looks locked down. It doesn't look open. Sorry, you cut out. It doesn't look open. That's correct. Yeah, it looks like it's been locked up. There's the chains over the little pier, the little walkway that leads to where the ship's docked. The ferry itself? Uh, the ferry looks locked down. Yeah, it looks like there's no ship going out. It should be going out in like 20 minutes. But you don't see any people out there either. Okay. Can we safely wait in the car? Mer Meryl, does it even look like people are going to be on the ferry? Is it still running? I mean, it looks like it's going to come back in like... I mean, I think we'll wait 20 minutes to see if it comes back. It looks chained up, but maybe they did that to keep... I don't know. I swear to God, if we get weathered out of going back, I don't know. Like we, I don't know, we book a hotel or something, but... You got to be 18. I could pr probably get this guy to do it, but. I mean, God he'd be stuck with us, so I mean, he probably could. I right, sleep in the car. It's not so bad. I, mean, I think that one's. I think that one leans back. The one, the one you're in leans back, and. If if we get if we get trapped here, uh, can we go to McDonald's? There you go. God, you're good at this. You read my mind. What I usually like to do. Ren, you're psychic. I want to go through and I want 20 double cheeseburgers with no pickles. Unless some of you like pickles and we'll get some with pickles and we'll just get them to label them. But that's what I, that's kind of my late night going home. What are the rest of us going to order? Food. I don't know. Whatever you want. I don't care. I'll I'm not going to eat 25 of them. You know, I've been, I've been in, I've been in America now for... Five years, and I have never had McDonald's out here. I've only had like, you do that super size stuff, don't you? Let's do that. Oh my God. I want that. I yeah, will. let's let's get it. Let's get that and like milkshakes and stuff. I could eat. He says having just eaten so much food and milkshakes, he's like, I could I could eat. My heart is breaking for you. We've got to do something about this. And I tap on the glass. Tap tap. Very slowly, the glass rolls back down. You can see the driver just looking stone-faced up at you through the rear of your mirror. How's it going up here? Appreciate you. Uh, listen, uh, the troops. Troops are hungry here. Uh, what do you think is the over-under on a McDonald's flyby and make it back for the ferry leave, this next ferry leaves? Can it be done? Yes, sir. He simply says, and then the window rolls back up, and you can hear the tires peeling away, water spinning off of them as he takes off to head to McDonald's, pick up your order, and circle back around. Uh, 
let's let's move through time a little bit because I imagine the back of this car now just smells like fast food. You all have just a ridiculous amount of McDonald's that you have in the back of the car. You're having a little party. You arrive back and uh, as you pull up to the pier, Meryl, make me a, let's call it an empathy roll. All right, so I'm rolling actual dice in here. An empathy, a 2010 empathy, yes. Minus one. Ten minus minus one. All right, I have a million bonus dice up here, uh, so let's use one of them. Uh, Charlie, I'll burn okay. one. We'll take it back up to three here. I got two threes and a one. So you needed at least a four here. Uh, the truth that I'll introduce is that the fairy did not return, but. You do see a smaller boat. Uh, looks like maybe a, a motorboat, maybe private, that's just sort of m- tied up to a nearby dock. Doesn't look like anybody's on it. There's nobody around. It's just but the ferry did not return, and there's no an there's an nobody unattended. here. Take an unattended boat. I think when we get back and we all kind of notice, and Meryl kind of notices, uh, Staley takes out the phone and texts Jacob. Does this meaning our plan starts now? Question mark. And then like puts the phone back in her pocket and continues to like eat her McDonald's and talk with Ren about the movie because she wants to know all the details. Uh, so, the, uh, his phone vibrates in his pocket, because never have your phone allowed, ever, ever, it's a, it's a crime, uh, takes his phone out, and he kind of, like, he has a Samsung, uh, S500, you know, the little slide, slide phone, none of this flip phone, no, 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 he has a slide phone, um, and he kind of looks at it, and Looks at the boat. Types back the boat, question mark. Like, not really sure if that's where she's going, but that's where his mind is like, I mean, do we steal the boat and, and just go for it? Do we do we do this? She'll, yeah, she'll she'll see it, she'll read it, and she'll just like giggle to herself and put it in her pocket and just like kind of blow it off until they like, can talk about it later. But she like shoves him a little with her shoulder and just like continues to eat McDonald's and talk about the movie. <laughs> he he looks over to Meryl and says, uh, "Hey, Meryl, um, my man." No, that's never mind. I was what? No, don't do that. No, what I was, is it? Like no, 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 no. I was just like, use your words. What is a boat and like? What? It's stupid. No, it's a stupid idea. About, it's just you about to tell me a riddle, one of them funny word puzzle jokes. I like them. But I mean, like your family's like rich and stuff. You, you know how to drive a boat. My family's dead, Jacob. How does that... Automatically, I know how to drive a boat. I know how to not drive a boat. I'll tell you that right now. Spent a lot of There's time on my parents' lights. yacht. I can probably I can probably get this thing done. Raise your hands if you have a cell phone on you. Your character. I think all three of you at once, uh, Jacob, Staley, and Meryl, your phones buzz and vibrate, and all of you get an emergency alert, alert saying that a series of islands, and it lists it's like Mount Desert Island, uh, Pretty Marsh Harbor, all of these island towns and islands are being evacuated. There is what the emergency alert calls a storm of the century off the East Coast. 
All oh, right. shit. What's going to happen to Jay and Gigi? Are they okay? I think Ren's eyes just start, like, welling up with tears. Like, she's... You just ruined oh, McDonald's for her. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm so... No, Ren, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just... I, I have Gigi's phone, and I feel bad because she probably should have her own phone. But it's probably nothing. She's probably with Mr. Toothaker, and they're probably getting the other kids ready, and everything should be fine. Everything's Why fine. Why do you have Don't Gigi's... Worry. What? Staley, why do you have Gigi's phone? Gigi gave it to me, just in case we needed anything. Okay. Um, That's cool. Look, we... this is how people die. This is how people get killed, okay? I've been out, been at this, living out here long enough to, the car will get swept I, away. I smack him and I'm like, Meryl! <laughs> what? Well, why don't we just get someplace higher than a building something a hotel something this old guy is stuck with us yeah that's cool I like tap on the glass again it slowly rolls down and you can just see him looking up placidly at you through the rear view mirror hey there he is listen appreciate you all you're doing up here uh so we got i don't know if you got a phone up here you get this uh, alert here, but we got some flash flooding and some it's some big stuff. So let's get to some high ground, maybe find a hotel, check into, um, and then we'll go back early, go back across early in the morning. What do you think? Yes, uh, is all he says simply. And then the near the window starts to roll back up again and the tires squeal water sprays off of them and he begins driving away away from the coast towards where there's a hotel and behind you through the back window of your vehicle you can just make out the edge the shore of the island that red storm that dark crimson purple storm lightning flashing over the island and then the car turns and none of you see the island again for quite some time. Let's go back to Gigi and to Jay. Gigi and Jay. Uh, I think Gigi is in the side passenger seat and like you're slowly coming to but like the pain of it, 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 it's very similar to the pain of getting hit by lightning and the after effects of that what it does to the body your muscles are weak um, it's very hard to focus but you're starting to come to as Jay is driving this truck Jay let's begin with you here as you're driving first let me know where you're headed and then introduce one new truth about this scene. Oh boy. Um, we are headed to the orphanage because Gigi said she needed to grab some things there. Um, and one truth about the scene. There are downed trees all over the island. And most likely on the road. <laughs> the truth that I'll add to this is that there are bodies in the water too, sometimes moving down the street. Sometimes they bounce off the hood of your car as you're driving through and the water level continues to rise. And, and Jay, it, at some point, you're looking up a little hill right one that isn't submerged so you can kind of get a good look at it as you're slowly moving around a tough turn and what you witness is strange it's not just flooding it's almost like the ground like the grass the dirt is oozing water like it's coming up from the ground itself Like 
think at that point is Gigi starts to stir next to you. Are you okay, Gigi? Can you hear me? The lighthouse. Oh no. Not. Why? I mean, it's still going off. Yeah. Why? What? I... Why is the lighthouse going off? I don't know. What, what I... does it? Doesn't doesn't mean anything. I'm just gonna get what you need from the orphanage. I really hope that whatever you need is really really necessary because it is getting Meryl? rough out here. Meryl has a gun. Yeah. I know. Do you know about the the other stuff in that box? Jay right now is trying to calculate what the right answer is here. <laughs> um, Jay's doing the math in his head. Uh, no, I can't say I do. There's a, there's a lot of money, Jay. That, 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 that's what I want to go back for. If we're going to get away, we're going to need a lot of money. Meryl had oh, a lot of money. money. I don't know, more money than I've ever seen. Thousands? That is. Maybe? Oh, <laughs> Jesus, just kind of like. Tens of thousands? Oh. I, 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 I didn't count it. It was, it was a lot of money. It was, it was all neatly wrapped up, you know, like, like, like he stole it from a bank or, or. And then I think she rubs her head because she's like got that ringing in her ears and like a tingly feeling going on from being electrocuted by her own stupidity not that long ago. Okay, well, that that is we're gonna need that just uh, and just keep we, resting. We should get Mister Toothacre. Nope, no, nope, no, no. Remember when I said we don't trust anyone? What? No. I mean, anyone outside of the family, right? He's... Anyone older than us. We don't trust. I think you've just pulled up into the parking lot of the orphanage at this point, and the rain's still coming down. This is slightly higher elevation, so it's not flooding quite as badly yet. And the two of you, as you pull up, and you're talking, you can make out one of the lights upstairs, it looks like um, Miss Toothacre's bedroom and Mr. Toothacre, Toothacre's bedroom, the one they shared as brother and sister. Light on in that room, you can make it out spilling through the window, but all the other lights in the house are off. Hey, where's the, where's the money, Gigi? He's, he's home. We, we, we should just get him to come with us. We don't have to Gigi, tell him we anything. We don't trust anyone. Here. Why not? Why not? I don't know what's going on, but I can tell you that no one here has our best interest at heart. We don't trust anyone. And she. Us is shaking her head and tears are brimming because she doesn't know what to do it's really hard for her to think about turning her back on mr toothaker when when she did that for miss toothaker mr toothaker ended up dead like not that long ago we okay we we get we get the money it's it's in my closet go go up to the room it's in my closet in the swim bag. I was in the swim bag. Okay. You stay here, Gigi. You're still clearly recovering. Wait. Took a big shock back there. Wait. What? How? What are we? What are we gonna do after? 
How, how are we going to get off the here. island? Where are we going to go? We catch the ferry back. And we just drive. There is no ferry. We figure it out later. The, the last ferry is the one that comes back. <sighs> someone. We, we find someone's boat. Someone has a boat here. People have boats here. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 Jay, do you, do you have a phone? No. Why? No, Jay, Jay doesn't have a phone. I think we established <laughs> that last time. Jay doesn't have a phone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Phone plans are expensive. I don't know where y'all are getting phones from. <laughs> <laughs> You you go upstairs, I will go in the house and I'll use the phone and I'll call my dad. Cuz cuz he cuz there's there's a boat. You want a boat? He's got a boat. Right? How long has your dad been here? I don't know. All his life, the same as everybody. We don't trust anyone. GG. my dad. Something fucked up is going on here. And I think all the adults know. I all the adults? Like... Like Phyllis at the library? Yes. We we should ask him then. No, no. I. No, we should go upstairs and ask Mr. Toothaker what this is and and why Mr. Toothaker's dead and. No, no, we can't trust anyone. Please, Gigi. And Gigi turns to her side of the car and looks out through the window and sulks. She's seen Jay angry like never and is having the feeling that she's not going to get her way with him. And she's still got a jittery feeling in her body and doesn't feel confident enough to fight him anymore. Gigi, I need you to trust me on this. If you love everyone else here, all the kids, our family, I need you to trust me on this. Okay. Just get the stuff. And get Ren's bear. Okay, we'll and get Colin. Ren's bear. Who is Colin? The cat. Her birthday cat. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I know. <laughs> it's Jay. I don't think Jay cares about the cat. I don't think Jay cares about the cat or knows about the cat. Um, <laughs> Jay's just like, I will take a quick look. If I can't find Colin, we have to go. The storm is getting out of control. And it is getting worse. The clouds are turning a strange dark red purple hue above the water level, even at this higher elevation through the woods is getting higher. It's starting to flood more. Um, and you still have to get back through town, presumably, depending on what you do. So Jay is going to get out of the car. He's going to look in the window real quick at Gigi. <laughs> and what's going through his head is, does he trust her not to, not to go talk or grab the phone? I think as he looks in, he sees Gigi, and she's shifting over to the driver's seat. And she's fiddling with the radio. She's trying to get the radio to turn on so she can hear the news. There are a weather report. Something like that. Jay is going to... Try 
try to rush up to her room. Grab the, grab the money. Grab the bear. He's not looking for the cat at all. Not even going to try <laughs> to look for the cat. <laughs> but that's what he's going to try to do. All right. Gigi, roll me empathy. As you're fiddling with the radio, you can hear it crackle, cut in and out, in and out. Uh, I'm normally on four for empathy, but lights are out, so we're down to three, and I'm just beating lights dropping again. Uh, six and a five, so success. You get to name one truth. What's one thing that's true? I think Gigi is staring up through blurry eyes and all of that rain coming down on the windscreen, and she's staring up at the window, uh, the, the lit window, and she sees someone looking out of that window, and then the light in the house goes out. The figure looking out of the window, you're pretty sure it's Mr. Toothacre and he's looking right down at you, and then the light goes out. And then for a second, that crackle of the radio, a voice comes through. I'm sorry, Gigi. I'm so sorry. And then crackle again. Dad? She calls at the radio, not meaning her actual dad, meaning Mr. Toothaker. There's no response, just the static, and the rain, and the thunder. And the thud of her fist hitting the dashboard. Jay, you return to seawall orphanage the old historic building passed down from generation to generation caretaker to caretaker many children have lived and here pretty marsh harbor has many secrets some of them big some of them small a few of them terrifying what is one thing that is true as you enter into your home. Muted, Tommy. The music that Mrs. Toothaker loved to play and sing to is playing very loudly and eerily throughout the whole house. It's an old crooning love song about a man who done his woman wrong. You can hear that voice, the pain in the voice, the longing in the voice, and the crackle of the record when it skips for just a moment and skips for just a moment and skips for just a moment and then continues on. The house is dark. You know where there's flashlights or matches, candles. How do you proceed, Jay? Jay is going to walk quickly, but not, you know, not too quickly. He's not running. He's also walking, you know, he can only go so fast because his leg is still pretty bum right now. Um, and, um, I don't think he ever got that 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 makeshift crutch. So, <laughs> so him trying to get around right now, like, is like a lot of a bit of pain, and a lot of hobbling, as quickly as he can. Um, and he's going to just he's going to try and ignore the music, just like. And go and find Gigi's room. You go up to the second floor. 
you pass by the the pictures, the photos of all of the different generations of children that line those stairs upwards to the top through different eras. And Jay, as you're climbing the stairs, you see a little bit of movement, almost as a reflection from one of those pictures. But to it's a dark-haired girl wearing what looks like settler's clothes. Her stringy hair covering most of her face. And as you walk, she's in the background of one picture. And when you take a couple of steps up, you see her pass into the next picture, just matching your pace. And she's in the background of each of those pictures. And as you're near the top, you notice that in each of the pictures, she's turning a little bit more towards you. Let's keep walking. This is just, we were shocked when you grabbed Gigi. This is clearly a chemical imbalance in your brain, and it's causing you to hallucinate right now. Most important things get money. Get out of here. The record screeches and comes to a stop. The music goes out. Roll me a desperate cool roll, Jay. Oh boy, okay. It's a minus one, so total of three right now. That's a five. You just oh, wait, needed not... at least a five or a six. Okay. <laughs> so you needed a five or a six and you got a five you get to uh -huh. introduce one truth oh boy. Oh boy. do I make it easier on myself or do I make it harder on myself oh oh <laughs> oh mm. that girl is carrying the book in her hands. The exact same book that you found at the top of the lighthouse. It's swinging mm -hmm. in her arms and she's not still. She moves in every picture. You can see it, that leather that you know, you know what kind of leather it is. Jay turns to the picture. The girl walking she at me yet? <laughs> turns towards you, and the hair falls out of her face so that you can look on her. She looks like she should be young, but her face is wrinkles upon wrinkles. You can't see her eyes just folds of skin where her eyes should be. Can't see her nose, just folds of skin where her nose should be. But you can see her smile, her big, dashing, bright, hungry smile as she turns towards you and her arm snaps, stretching out of that picture, reaching for your neck. <laughs> God. Oh God! Uh, Jay immediately stumbles back. And What's he try to do? Reaching out of the picture. Oh boy. Um. Jay's gone through some shit at this point. Um. Despite what Jay has told Jacob and the rest of the group and uh, and uh, Staley, Jay does remember a bit of what happened that night in the lighthouse. Um, and 
and Jay wants to try, and as the hand is reaching out, Jay wants to try and reach in and grab the book. Roll me desperate quickness. Okay. Oh. Uh, it's a real great time for all of those wonderful donations to come in and get some extra dice here. Because <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got three normally. Um... And I guess two now. Come on. Oh, that's a one and a two. You reach in and you touch, you grab the book. The skin of the book is wet and sticky. You can't get your fingers off of it. And even as you're reaching in, stretching your arm as much as possible, that smiling girl's hand wraps slowly around the back of your neck. You can feel like her long fingers just kind of curling gently around the back of your neck. And you're pulling at the book, but you can't pull it out. You can't let go. You're stuck to it and she's stuck to you. And then her grip around the back of your neck tightens. You can feel her squeezing and choking. You hear something in your neck pop. It doesn't snap, but it pops. And subtract one from your quickness for the rest of the session. You're locked there, trapped there. What do you do? Jay is just gonna let out a blood curdling scream, I think. Just like an absolute just I I'd do it now, but I would startle people in the house, so um but just like an absolutely just anguished blood curdling scream. Jay she slowly turns your head around and around and around more than it feels like it should be able to turn. You're at the top of the stairs, just one step down, and you're looking down this long hallway. And Mr. and Mrs. Toothacre, Miss Toothacre's door is open, slamming shut and reopening with the breeze from the storm outside. She turns your head around to look through that door, and you can see Mr. Toothacre there, dangling, swinging side to side from a rope, his feet just sort of locked. I think your voice becomes hoarse, Jay. Mm -hmm. Exhausted. Do you give up? Do you do something else? Jay will barely freak out. Nico. I'll do anything. You can't see it, but you can feel it somehow. That smile behind you get wider. Roll me a desperate empathy. Yeah. That's, that's a great that's a great stat for me. That's a great stat for Jay. Um normally two, 
But, uh, it's just one die right now. Nope. Oh, that's two. I don't know why it's not rolling in the box, but <laughs> that's a two. You hear a whisper from behind you. You'll get your chance, Jay. You'll get your chance. And a moment later, you are pulled into that picture. You can feel your body like it's breaking through glass, stretching thin. And, and in a world that is inexplicable to the human mind and the human heart, you see that smiling girl smiling down at you. And that picture frame now just shows the stairwell back to Seawall Orphanage. And we're going to cut away from you and spotlight down to Gigi. Gigi, you're in the car. You've heard the whisper through the radio. Jay's not returned, and it's been much longer than it should have been. You have the spotlight, so you can talk about a memory. You can explain Gigi's inner thoughts, whatever you'd like here. Um, I think I'm going to do a memory. I think Gigi is sat in the front of this car, kind of vibrating in this this current moment waiting frustrated waiting for jay but too scared to go into the house and her hand is just hovering over the horn for the car to try and summon him and she remembers the first time that she was driven up to the orphanage she had been in a car with a woman who is basically a stranger to her a social worker, someone from the government. And she was explaining to Gigi how Gigi was going to live in this house now. And she was going to have lots of brothers and sisters. And she was going to be looked after by Mr. Uh, Mrs. Miss Toothacre. And that she should be nice. Because they were very nice people. And... She remembers seeing Miss Toothaker in the in a window, in the front lower window of the house, kind of peering out. I think it's the window from the the nice lounge, the lounge that's kept under plastic. And it was Mr. Toothaker who met her at the door and he greeted her and he asked her to smile and explained he was gonna be a dentist. But now he's much too busy looking after all the children of the house. And he asked her questions and took her through to the kitchen where on the counter there is the, the pretty much customary banquet of crab and potato kind of set out. And in the window on that first day there, there were three cats sat on the windowsill all waiting for when the crab would be passed out to them. So they could, they could eat these three mangy stray cats. And down the stairs had come her sister. Because uh, I think Staley was there before Gigi. But maybe not long. And Staley had kind of taken over from Mr. Toothaker and given Gigi the tour of the house and explained the chores and things. And for the rest of the afternoon, whenever Gigi felt uncertain and kind of looked around, she always noticed that it was Mr. Toothaker was kind of keeping an eye on them. And I think she's just remembering that whole thing and remembering how she'd asked when she'd get to see her dad. And Mr. Toothaker said, uh, I'm sure he'll be, he'll be by sometime soon. I'll let you know if he calls. And then she remembers waiting by the phone for him to call. 
for the first week or so. And Mr. Toothaker explained, he's probably just letting you settle in. Don't worry, he'll call soon. And then there had been a bad storm. And she and a couple of the others had all sat by the phone waiting. And it was the next morning when he did call. And her dad had called and explained he was on the mainland. And he hoped she was safe and the house was doing good. And then he'd been interrupted and the the conversation had been cut short. And that had been basically the start to her life at Seawall. And I think she then remembers how each of her other siblings had come to be at the house until Meryl had shown up. And that had been really strange. This expensive town car dropping off this kid who was practically an adult. And he cruised in all money and big talk. And she kind of remembered him from like around school and stuff when they were younger. But he just kept calling her Elizabeth and that drove her insane. And then she kind of blinks and she looks down at the clock and she looks up at the house and just is is freaking out because Jay isn't coming out. There's this mix of pleasant memories and things that maybe she had forgotten and she's re-remembering for the first time, piecing all of these people, all of these pieces of her life, her family together. Then you realize it's been too long. You look up and the door's still not open. The lights are still not on. And there's another crackle on the radio. A voice. Go, Gigi. Run, Gigi. And then a second voice. Jay's voice. Jay, what do you say through the radio to Gigi? I need your help. Gigi. Please. Jay? Jay? There's another crackle. Cranking the, the volume as as it'll go and she's frustratedly hitting the dashboard again looking up at the house And she'll throw open the door and she's gonna run up towards the house to find out what's going on You're wading through water as soon as you drop out uh, Like it, it's already knee-high and you're pushing through it and it's pushing back at you Gigi like it's trying to keep you from the house Like it doesn't want to let you get there. And storm crackles overhead. You get the front door open though. There's water flooding through the house. It's dark. And you hear the screech of a person. Sounds maybe like Jay from up the stairs. She runs to the bottom of the stairs and she'll reach for the familiar light switch. Uh, See if she can get a light on, see what's happening in here. Roll me an empathy roll. Cause I'm not that character in a horror movie doesn't turn on the fucking lights if they can. Haunting a hill house. Just saying. Um, <laughs> I just dropped the dice. All right, I'm down to two. Two whole empathy. Here we go. Is this desperate, Don? No, this is regular. Okay. Oh, I wrote a four and a five, so it doesn't matter. I succeed. I'm going to lose all my mini dice playing this game. I just keep throwing them. Oh, no. 
You get to name a truth here as you're flickering with oh. the light. I don't think the light comes on, the power's out, but I think the light from the lighthouse hits the house. That strange light that is forever fixated on our house whenever it turns on somehow hits the, the house, but it's got a different quality than normal. There's something weird about it. It's weird because the lighthouse is no longer there and the light is green, but the siren gets a little bit louder as the green light comes in through the windows, changing the hue of everything. And you can make out its reflection off of those portraits on the stairs of previous children who have lived in this orphanage. Provides enough light that you can climb if you'd like. I think she takes the stairs two at a time. The last she knew, Jay was going to her room. Um, and I think we established she's essentially just like one flight of stairs up with Birdie. Mm -hmm. um, so I think she's going to two at a time straight up the stairs towards her bedroom because she's assuming that's where Jay is. Roll me smarts. Smarts. Regular old smarts. Uh, okay, I get to roll one whole dice. One fail. You climb up the stairs and you notice that as you're climbing each of those picture frames, there's this dark haired girl in old, maybe late 1800s clothing in the back of every single picture. And when you get to the top, that final picture, she's there, her hair covering her face, her head down, her hand off to her side, holding Jay's hand. And Jay is in the picture too, staring out at you. I'm not... I'm not crazy. The girl in the photo is a, is a story that Staley made up. Brayden, Brody, it's not true. And she's going to try and rip that picture off the wall to kind of frisbee it away. She doesn't believe what she's seeing. She thinks this is part of her current crazy state of mind. And she's going to try and just get rid of that, that picture and try and move on from it. You rip the picture off the wall and you throw it down. It falls into the water of the flooding bottom level down below. And you turn and Jay, you're right at the top of the stairs. Just one step up from Gigi. He wasn't there a second ago, but he's there now. Jay. Hi. You are. We we have to go. Where, where's the stuff? I, I I I heard you scream. Yes. Jay's just making some inc incoherent sounds at the moment. Can I see? Just the still in shock. Can I see the stuff that he'd grabbed at all? I haven't grabbed it yet. You didn't make it? Oh yeah, that's right, you gotta grab the stuff of the stairs. The... Where, where, where's the stuff? Uh, 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 Come on! She's gonna grab his hands and drag him towards the room to get the stuff. Jay, do you go with Jay him? will just, yeah, Jay will just kind of follow, like, like, there's just, like, he's just on auto right now, autopilot. Um, he's just, like, he's, he'll respond to, like, her doing, like, if she pulls him along, but, like, he's just on autopilot right now. You're acting like you've never been in a girl's room before, and she's trying to make conversation, and she doesn't want to ask why he's freaked out, because then she'll know why he's freaked out. So she's just making all kinds of babble, stupid conversation, and hurrying to get the swim bag out of the closet and get Ren's bear off the bed. You drag him into the room, your room. It's the only room on the upper level 
where there's still an open door. The door to your room's already open. And you're able to grab the bag just where you left it. You can look through the window. What were you going to say? I think she pauses when she grabs the bear off the bed and remembers that Ren has a precious pile of stuff in a box under the bed as well. And she's going to grab that and tip that into Meryl's box. So it's all her money and all of Ren's stuff is going into Meryl's box under the bed. And she's going to hope that's high enough in this room, in this house, that it's going to not get flooded out. You're keeping it in the house or you're taking it with you? Uh, I think she would start to take it with her, but I don't know if she can carry that on top of a swim bag, a teddy bear, and holding Jay's hand. And if he's not really responsive, I think she would maybe put it like high in the closet or something so it's out of harm's way. Gigi, you're putting it, you're, you're grabbing the things you want to grab, you're storing the rest, you're holding on to Jay, and the two of you can see through the window in the direction of the lighthouse, that green light, that eerie light spilling in, and there is no land beyond the window. Down below, there's just the sea. And you see something else, too. It's rocking over the waves, an ancient-looking barge of rusted metal. Its windows are shattered and broken. Its American flag and sails are worn, whipping furiously with the wind of the storm. You can see an arc of lightning shoot down from the storm clouds above. It flashes over the water, over that ship that's sailing just side of your window enough that you can see the ship's name painted in white on the side of the vessel it's the SSS Newfoundland or Newfoundland it's one of the two ships that the founding families used to cross from the mainland to the island when they settled pretty marsh Jay what is one truth about this scene Although I do kind of want to set this up. Um, I get to name a truth. How... How big... How big was that book? The tomb? I mean, if you want to think like... uh larger like it's as thick as a bible Mm -hmm. okay i think sort of after we see the scene i think we find the book on one of the beds jay would like to grab the book Put it in a shoebox and throw it out the window. The glass shatters right in front of you, Gigi, as Jay grabs the book and the shoebox and throws it out the window into the waves out beyond. And the truth that I'll add to this is that, Gigi, you can make out now the spectral forms of children, many different generations, some of whom look just like those pictures on the wall of the stairs, some like settlers, some dress smartly in suits and dresses that might be from the 1930s. One little girl has a sundress on, ripping in the wind, a little hippie sunflower in her hair. They're all reaching over the deck of of the ship as it's passing by your window, they're crying out 
but their voices are lost in the storm. Jay, he, he told me to run. Where are we gonna run to now? Off this island. Can you swim? It's a long, <laughs> it's a long swim. Um, Jay can swim for sure. You definitely learn how to swim. I think on this island, like it's definitely necessary. It is required, I think, <laughs> to learn um, to swim on this island. Um, just have to get out of here any way we can and find the others. Because if you, if you can't swim, we're going to have to just sit on the roof and wait. Let's say this. In a storm, it's a long swim back to the mainland. Well, I wasn't thinking swimming to the mainland. I was thinking swimming to a safer place. Yes. Since this whole area is on the water, is either we hang out in the <laughs> attic or we've got to swim somewhere. <laughs> Uh, there is there there is the exit from the attic that goes. Jacob likes to hang out there, so does Staley. Yes, we just have to find. We just have to. We just we just have just just have to find some some way to get get out of here, away from this island. Find the others. Okay. Okay. She puts her swim bag on her back, and it's one of those, you know, wet bags, so whatever's in it is gonna stay inside, whether it's wet or dry kind of thing. And she'll make sure that's done up tight. And she looks out after that tome, wondering what the fuck that was about, but isn't gonna ask right now. And she'll head out to the landing to go up set stairs to the ladder to get to the attic. Jacob, you follow. Jay, um, yeah, oh, Jay, Jay follows. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Jay, it's a little harder for you with your bum leg and probably the shock that you're still experiencing. You you actually still have like these red bruises around your neck from where that girl grabbed you. As you're climbing the stairs up to the dark attic below, looking down, you can see over the banister that the water is coming up, rippling through. You know. Pretty quickly, rising faster and faster. Jacob keeps camping stuff up here sometimes. Maybe, maybe there's uh, some rope or something. It, it. Probably just cigarettes, alcohol. And up into the attic we go with this <laughs> cheery, we can totally survive this attitude. And Jacob's supplies are up there. Um, what is it? What do we have? Jacob, what's in, what's in your supplies in the attic? Uh, there are two changes of clothes, including um, a good hoodie. Uh, there is uh, two bowls um, of uh, what you would probably know Jacob well enough to not trust to be water in water bottles. It's probably like gin, just in a, a bottle of supermarket store brand gin and uh, a bottle of something mixed with Coke that's probably whiskey or vodka or rum or something uh, with like off-brand cola. Uh, there is uh, a mostly empty pack of 20 uh, cheap cigarettes, a lighter, a switchblade knife, and there would probably be some cash. But not much, because you you notice when I take too much. So some of your cash is in, is in the loft. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's that's about it. Nothing really useful. Um, 
You said there's a lighter there, right? There's a yeah. You said there's a lighter with a yeah, like a proper Zippo with like some terrible, mm -hmm. like heavy metal album cover like on the side. Like a skull and crossbones. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Super cool. Angry um, crab. Yeah. Oh, it's an angry yeah, crab. It's, yeah, an, it's angry an angry crab. crab. Oh yeah. And, for and sure. also like 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 if you flick if you flick like the uh, the top off of the angry crab it just like falls off because the hinges are broken because i've 100 spent too much time just flicking it back and forth and it's a cheap shitty knockoff lighter so i've broken it that's going in the backpack the attic is illuminated with a green light and it's coming in from the window the boards creak against your weight as you're moving through it, gathering supplies. There is a little round window you can climb through if you wanted to try to get up to the ceiling, up to the roof. That is definitely Gigi's plan, is now to get out. And I, there's a basically a lower roof, right, that we just go down to and then out. That's how it works to get out. Yep. Yep. Does Jay follow her through the window? Yeah, I mean, Jay has no other plan right now. Like, Jay was like, we needed to get to the car, we needed to get to the thing, and that's all gone up in in water. water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I can't, I can't say flames here. Um, hey. You're able to climb out to the roof through the window. It's a tight squeeze, but you're able to do it and get outside. And as you pull yourselves up to prepare to jump down, it's not, it can't be flooding. It's more like the island is sinking. The water <laughs> is in every direction around you. Your house, part of your house is still above it. Some trees from the forest you can see still sticking up out of it. You can't see the truck anymore. You don't see the town anymore that ghost ship the children reaching from you from its rails the eerie green light in the distance that seems to be cast over you the storm up above and the this two can't be real jay i don't know what's real or not anymore Okay. Uh, rising tides lift, lift, lift ships, right? That's, that's, that's the thing. If we, we, we just swim to where there are boats, and the boats float, and we get on the boat. Or I hope one sails on by, I guess. I've got a bad light, Gigi. I don't know how... Well, I can swim right now. You just gotta float and I'll, I'll drag you or something. Well, we can, we can use the, the hoodie. Uh, if we, we bundle it up, you, you hold on to it and I'll hold on to an arm and I'll pull the arm with the, with the buoyancy. You just kick with your good leg and your, your arm or something. Or are you just gonna uh, sit here and, and hope a helicopter or something comes on by? Okay. It'll be okay. You just gotta, it's not far. Gigi lies. It's pretty far. What do you do, Gigi? What's your what's your plan? What's your approach here? So I think essentially what she does is she takes the hoodie and tries to make it into almost a buoyancy aid, even though it's not going to be a buoyancy aid, but it's something that she can get Jay to hold onto so that he's not holding onto her. And then she's going to try and drag him behind her. She's going to swim and try and drag him using the, the hoodie, essentially, as a rope. 
And She's trying to convince herself it's going to work better than it's going to. Um, I think wherever she thinks the closest boat is going to be, which I'm thinking is going to be the marina, which is away. But Yeah, so you have in one direction to your north that sort of floating, rocking... Wait, the lighthouse light's been on, right? There's a light on coming from the north. Where the lighthouse used to stand is no longer, but the light is still Okay, if we look out, the there's direction. no, like, phantomly convenient lighthouse reassembled tower? Just the boat, just the SS Newfoundland. I don't want to swim. In that direction. How real does the boat look? The big boat out that way. I mean, it looks real, but it doesn't but it doesn't make is it scooby-doo ethereal ghost glowing or is it like it looks like a shot no it's it okay. is illuminated in that green light that's coming from behind it and the the arena would be in the opposite direction a little f further away she's gonna swim for the marina she, like that boat is really tempting but she doesn't believe it she doesn't trust it everything tonight is fucking weird and she hates it and she's gonna swim where she knows Plus the ghost children are weird, she's not about that life. So the two of you enter into the cold water and it is freezing, even in the late summer. The water of Maine is always freezing, it's colder than normal, and you can feel it shocking your body. Gigi, you were electrocuted earlier. Jay, you were strangled, twisted about and it's hard going as the waves are crashing over you even with the little preparations that you've done it's a hard swim for both Gigi, you're trying to get towards the marina and you see just sort of out in the waves there a little scoop not one that you recognize not manned it's just rocking and the waves you're able to slowly swim towards it but it's getting harder and harder and jay it's hard for you to hold on it's hard for you to kick with your one leg and swim with the other as salt water is crashing it to your mouth up your nose and stinging your eyes the rain continues to come down from above relentlessly gg as you see this ship you also see a large shape emerge from the water just beyond it. You see the antennas of a massive crab rising from the ocean, and thousands of eyes twinning, reflecting the green light of that glow behind you. The storm and the sirens scream, but you see that crab begin to rise from the waters unsure if you can get to the boat or if you can get to the boat before it rises and you have a moment to choose and then i'll have you make a roll i choose to drag jay's ass to the the little bobby boat i don't care i believe in this tiny little sloop and I believe in Kai Hawkeye, who just donated three crits to me and Jay. Thanks. Thanks, Hawkeye. You're the real legend here. I'll allow you to make me, then, a desperate quickness roll. And you are minus yes. two dice for the hour. Right. So that gives me three. Swim, swimming, you're like, sw uh, like, GG, as you're swimming through the water, I don't think it's a struggle for you as much as it, the hardest part is for you to keep hold of Jay. Mm -hmm. You almost feel like this is where you belong there's something invigorating about the salt and the sea in your mouth like i'm not gonna titanic you tommy all right we're gonna get through this two of us can fit on the door i'm gonna spend two of my bonus we should have we should have found the door we should have just floated on a door why didn't i think of that until now found the door. <laughs> just ripped off the front door it's already been knocked off once oh my god fine. All right, I'm going to roll five dice in total. Three for my quickness and two for my overlay, because quickness is GG's best stat in 2010. How did I not roll? Oh, oh, that was cocked. Ho, ho. Mm-mm. 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 You do have a re-roll, because you got the spotlight. You can use it now, or you can save it for later. 
Yeah, I want to reroll. I don't want to lose <laughs> on a swimming roll. Do I get to reroll all of them done or just my quickness? Yeah, it's a complete reroll. All, all of them. That's better. That's one six out of five dice. I will take that. You get to name one truth. What is true about this moment? Uh, what is true at this moment? I think we see that ship, the ghostly one, has moved around and it almost appears to be coming towards us as the crab is looming up out of the water menacingly. And that ship is on collision course for the tiny sloop. And the crab is there and it's a bad time. And then we see the crab claw come down and it grabs onto that ship as it did in history and just takes a chunk off the bow. And Gigi is just like, I'm gonna take a deep breath. And she goes under the water to try and avoid some of the just kind of debris and chaos. And she's gonna drag Jay down with her and push as hard as she can for that boat. As far as she can go in this single breath that she's got, she's gonna push as hard as she can through the water. I just hope the nightmares aren't there when she resurfaces. You watch what happened once before many years ago as the crab rises its great claw tearing the Newfoundland apart. And you go under the water a moment later. And as the two of you are pulled under and continue to swim, that green light still provides a little bit of illumination, a glow just beneath the surface. You see with salt stinging your eyes, the bones, the bodies of those who drowned in the crash floating all around you. You're pushing them out of your way as you swim closer and closer to that little sloop rocking around in the waves. And then you emerge, Gigi, and the ship is gone. The crab is gone, but your sloop, the real boat, the small boat with a motor is there and you're able to pull yourself up off the side sopping wet jay you're still holding on to the sweater g comes up gg how are you trying to get jay up there so she's on the boat and i imagine she's knelt down so she's a nice low profile and she's just leaning over and she's gonna let go of the sweater to try and grab onto one of his arms to pull him up that way. What does Jay do? I mean, Jay is going to do his best to try and, you know, with Gigi's help, pull himself up. And get out of the water. Gigi, you have a good lock on the edge of the ship as you're pulling up. Jay, you, your hands are slippery. Everything about the two of you is wet and it's hard to keep your grip on Gigi. Roll me a desperate grit roll. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just gonna burn all of my extra dice there. That's, <laughs> what? we're just gonna use all three here. Cause uh, it's a one if I don't. So it's a one dice if I don't. Oh, that's a five and a six. Oh, they're back. They're back. <laughs> you get to introduce one truth, Jay. Things have been so bad for Jay for the last couple of rolls. So could do something good. It's an um, entire game. This, <laughs> we've been playing this game wrong, clearly. Um, we, I mean, Jay manages to and with Gigi's help, they get up onto the boat and the engine works. I think there's a moment, Jay, as the engine starts up and Gigi knows how to use, she, she, knows, she knows boats well enough. You're just sort of laying on your back, Jay, exhausted. And the sea whispers to you, you'll have your chance, Jay. You'll have your chance. And then the siren stops 
and the green light blinks out. The rain is a little lighter as the storm moves on, your ship rocking in the waves. And the two of you can just make out in the distance the mainland, the coast where Bangor is. But all around you, there is no island. There is no pretty marsh. It's now beneath the waves. And that's where we're going to go. Back I have to... Yeah, yeah, go for it. Very quick note, I'm super sorry to Hamsters with Hats because I missed it because we were role-playing. Um, but I think that's a boon for Jay. Uh, I'm assuming that's okay. who Picture Boy is. So, Tommy, we will figure <laughs> out what your boon is going to be at some point. I'm really sorry. Just everything was going on. <laughs> oh, no, no. That, that'll be good. That'll be good. Picture um, Boy. <laughs> I want to move now to a little bit later as I imagine somehow, some way, all of the children meet up. I think uh, maybe they, the four who had left for McDonald's and then had gotten a hotel room come back later to the dock, right? The next time there might be a ferry. Let me know. Uh, Meryl, Meryl, what's your plan here? Let's find out. Tell me how the group here, Meryl, reunites. Because I want I want to see the moment where the six of you meet up again. Okay. Well, let's move through this quickly. If they all get hotel rooms, the driver is put up separately and uh, <laughs> probably just the less said the better because Meryl falls straight asleep, okay? And who knows what everybody else did in their time unsupervised in an empty hotel room. Uh, meanwhile, we then get up and uh, I think we do McDonald's breakfast. I mean, I think it's sausage biscuits and hash browns all around. I mean, we're just too, there's no such thing, too much of a good thing is, is uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's bullshit. So then we make our way over and the car drops us off at the orphanage after a terrible flood. I mean, I imagine the drive back into town is odd and we're looking out the windows and then he takes us back to the orphanage. There is no town. There is no island. As you drive back to the ferry, the ferry never returned. You can look out over the ocean, but after the storm passed, the island's just gone. And I think your driver probably like lets the four of you out. And you can all see that in, in, it's a clear, sunny day with the storm gone the next day. There's no ferry, there's no island, but there is a little boat slowly coming towards the pier. Uh, uh, does anybody else see the boat? I'm I'm not yeah, crazy. I see, I see the boat. Seeing seeing is not the problem. It's that seeing things that are there isn't the problem. Seeing things that aren't there. Just making sure that I wasn't the only one seeing it because you know that happens. But it from the We're distance, the can we make out who it is? on the boat or do we just see like a little speck of a boat no i mean i will say that like you watch it approach and what does uh, i want to know what what does gg what does survivor gg and survivor j look like as they dr drive sail the <laughs> motorboat towards bangor what would they see I think Gigi is doggedly pushed up one arm kind of over the engine, just praying this thing doesn't die. I think there have been some touch and go moments in this very, very long night. And I think her eyes are kind of feeling crusty from the salt water where it's kind of dried on her face a little bit. And it's just like very strange. She doesn't look entirely human at this point, just a bizarre sight draped over this this engine trying to persuade it to stay alive just a little bit longer. Just squinting, not really believing the land in front of her is real. Oh, 
Holy shit. <laughs> I want to like get right up onto the shore with my boots getting wet and get ready to receive them and pull them the hell out of that boat. Yeah, I, will... I run over. Yeah. And just not really knowing what to say and still like not really sure if we're in the right place or not because the only time I, I saw it was was in the dark or I've been on like a trip with someone. I You know, you don't really pay attention to like as a kid out the window. I don't like I, I never really knew where anything was. So like I'm I'm not even sure we're at the right harbor. Like we should be able to see the island from here. So Jacob isn't thinking like Jacob's like thinking we're in the wrong place and then sees this coming in and just calls out to Gigi, not really knowing what to say. Or, um, problem at the library? <laughs> I think you see her look to something down in the boat as she looks towards Jay. Jay has just been laying in the bottom of the boat, just like staring at the sky <laughs> on their way here. I think it would be at this point that like Staley in her worry would run over to Gigi as soon as Gigi's like out of the boat and on stable land, like give her a genuine hug with consent. And just like, like embrace her very tightly, and just like in her ear whisper, "I am so glad to see you." I think she, she lets she... out a weary groan as Staley's arms come around her, and she kind of leans in, and then you feel kind of a shift in her weight, and she tries to turn her head as she just throws up out of anxiety and swallowing of seawater and being squeezed and all of that stuff. Yeah, I'll kind of like move over, but still kind of like brace her and help her and, and move her hair back for her like a good friend should. Just gently pat her back. What about um, Ren? Um, Ren is stunned. Um, you know, when you're a kid and you don't really understand the gravity of a situation, like if you're a kid and you live through like a hurricane or a tornado, like you understand that it's a disaster, but like you don't really understand the gravity of a situation until like, you know, you get in your car and like drive around your town for the first time and you see like branches and stuff everywhere. So I think she has this moment of like, where she's just like stunned and frozen and she's like, where's like, where's that? I Like, I know it should be there. And I think it's taking her a long time to, like, come to terms with, like, this was, like, a huge disaster. What happened? Like, how did Gigi sail this little tiny boat here? Like, it's just not making any sense. She's having a hard time, like, processing it. What about Jay? Now that the ship has come rocked up onto the edge of shore, Gigi has been able to climb up out of it, and you can hear voices from beyond. You're laying in the back of the boat. What does Jay do next? Jay will finally get up out of the boat and I think just start walking towards town <laughs> I think just probably still got the sw Jacob sweater clutched in his arms <laughs> Jacob will like go over seeing him getting out of the boat and will actually help him with his any difficulties having walking and stuff but he does take a moment to look in the boat and not seeing uh, a crutch of any kind 
just kind of quietly says, uh, I guess my dad didn't have anything your size. Jay will just shake his head silently. What's going on? You just... You just have to... You have to go. Not, not, nothing's going on. It's just a real bad storm. Gigi, where'd the island go? What happened? Why did you, how did you get here on the boat? It was a, it was a bad storm. We, we... Gigi, where's your dad? We, we found a boat and we, we took it here. It was real bad. There's water everywhere. So, uh, is, is our, is our home flooded? Like, did we, like, are my, like, is everything ruined? I think Gigi stops and she turns to look back in the direction where Brady Moss should be. And she takes a deep breath. Uh, yeah. Uh, she turns and reaches for the, the swim bag and she goes into it and I think she pulls out Ren's bear. I think that was probably stuffed in last. And so she'll just pull it out by the head. And just hold that out to Ren. We, we should get inside somewhere. Um... She would take the bear and like hold it to her chest like a kid would. And I think that she would uh, like link her arm into into Gigi's and not say anything and just walk towards town, follow Jay. Is Jay like well ahead? Has he just been kind of wandering on on his own? Yeah. Yeah, Jay is just just like blank stared at the town clutching the sweater. Just walking towards town. Jay walks towards the town of Bangor the same morning. Ren and Gigi link up, walking together. Gigi stunned as well. Staley and Jacob, the two of you are together there, watching them go. I think there's a moment maybe where you can remember the plans you were making just a day earlier, your ideas for what the future might be. What do you, you do here now? I think Staley walks over to Jacob and grabs his hands and looks him dead in the eyes and he can see that she's crying, like just just soft tears. And she says, I don't know what's going on. But promise me, don't be inside, okay? I just need to hear you say it, please. And then I think with that, she would like hold the one hand, turn around, and then like follow after them. And she's still crying. Does Jacob follow too? 
he he takes a few moments and he he's looking back for 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 a short little while he he just needs to stare for a few moments back seeing a part of part of the world is missing it's and it's not just part of the world it's almost the only world he knows anymore and um he uh just stares out and after a short little while is just like unsure where to go from there and as much as he he realizes that his dad didn't come and that no one else was on that boat and he kind of wonders if he should look around and then realizes that there is no one who actually knows he's alive anymore because no one knows any of them other than maybe Merrill none of them really have ties they don't exist the whole place is gone they can do anything they want and he squeezes Staley's hand and he will walk off with her after the others and try to put it all behind him the waves are crashing onto the shore of the Bangor coastline Merrill you watch as the others head off towards town you can feel the spray of the water up against your skin, the edge there near the boat. What does Merrill do or think? Hear them confirm that it's all gone, right? You're half hearing them talk about how it's all gone. And while he hears them shuffle off, he's not looking at them. He's looking out towards where the island was and very slowly starts walking out into the water and he gets about chest height in the water and he's looking out and very quietly under his breath he just says damn he turns around and gets back in the car and the car drives away a black escalade pulls out fat nez as the foster family, most of them walk towards town, Merrill speeds away and leaves it behind. And that's where our story for 2010 ends. We're going to go to a break and we're going to return in 10 years to our foster family and their most unfortunate return to pretty marsh harbor stick with us folks grab a snack stretch we will be back here in just a few minutes <laughs> 